Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Ozen Engineering. In this video, I will be talking about how we set up a fatigue simulation for a dental implant. This is very typical of many medical device companies. Uh, these companies use ANSYS tools to simulate various types of ASTM, ISO, or um, ASME testing methods to make sure that their implants, biomedical implants, are durable. The key benefit ANSYS provides here is the ability to model things like nonlinear contacts, which allows us to model accurate fixture interaction as well as component to component interaction. So I'm going to start from the beginning by opening up a clean ANSYS workbench environment and loading in the geometry. This is a ANSYS workbench environment that allows us to simulate a wide range of analysis from structural mechanics to fluid dynamics, electromagnetics, explicit drop simulation, thermal. So almost everything ANSYS can do is available in this tool, in this environment. And we're going to start with just ba a basic static structural analysis. So here is the geometry we're starting with. We have a number of parts here in the analysis, uh, the implant and the screw. I'm going to set both of these to be uh, a, a version of titanium here. So we have a, a large list of titanium alloys as well as steel, metal, plastics. I'm just going to pick the first titanium alloy here. The cap, I'll make this out of, uh, let's say, a carbide. Maybe a titanium carbide material. Uh, the fixture. This, let, let's see, we can, maybe perhaps it's a polycarbonate or some other type of uh, uh, epoxy plastic material. Maybe we'll just make it a, a mixture of ABS and polycarbonate. And finally the load cell here, I'm going to make it a rigid body. This way we don't have to model the inside of the of the load cell. Uh, so the material properties are all set. If I go into the material section, you can see that my titanium material has a isotropic hardening model as well as fatigue curve. So we can easily calculate the fatigue characteristics of our implants. Next we want to set up the, the connections. So uh, you can see that many parts here are screwed in. We want to ensure that the, the surfaces are proper, properly selected. I'm going to add a couple more surface to this. and we'll change the behavior from bonded to frictional. Uh, similarly with this one, this is probably glued together the cap to the implant. This one is also screwed in, so we'll change that to a frictional contact. And I think it did select all of the surfaces we need. And finally this one from the top to bottom will make this a frictionless contact. So those are the contacts that, that needed to be set up. I'll set a frictional coefficient of one, but this depends on your test data and how much friction you think is at those interfaces. These are nonlinear contact. One quick way of making sure we have a uh, fast and stable solution is to upgrade, update the stiffness at each iteration so ANSYS can adjust the stiffness to ensure better convergence. Next, let's take a look at, a quick look at the mesh here. You can see the mesh is a little bit large on, on the structure side and if I, if I hide this part, see the mesh is not bad here but it's still probably a little bit coarse. So we can select these two, sur two parts, put in a sizing, and that circle is how big the default sizing is for this. So maybe we cut this down to two millimeters and we can put in a sizing here too, maybe three millimeters uh, or five millimeters. Make this fairly coarse. Uh, at the contact areas, we want to be a little bit more careful, so I can drag those into the meshing section. 
and specify maybe we want to drop the contact area down to one millimeter. Generate an updated mesh. Having a smaller mesh on the contact area gives us more uh, integration and contact points, which uh, reduces the amount of penetration and, and, and uh, usually leads to a more stable solution as well as a more accurate solution. Uh, the downside to that is as you refine the mesh in the contact region or anywhere, the simulation speed slows down and it takes longer to run an analysis. I'm running the simulation on my four core laptop, so it'll, it will take a little bit of time with this much nonlinearity. But with more cores and more computational resources, it should run faster. Okay, so the mesh is completed. If I hide this part now, you can see we have smaller mesh. We can probably go a little bit smaller than that even. Okay. So now let's go ahead and set up the simulation. We're going to support this area with fixed support. And we're going to move this surface down. Because this is a rigid body component, we can assign remote displacement. So it's going to, going to be uh, moving minus one millimeter downwards, and we're going to fix all the other degrees of freedom. And now when we run the simulation, oh, we, it's a nonlinear analysis. We want to turn on large deflection, and we want to turn on auto time stepping. Usually I start with maybe 10 or 100, so maybe 50 here, and usually 1e to the 6. This allows ANSYS to dynamically adjust the amount of load it's putting on at each point to uh, calculate so that we get a converged solution. It takes a while to run the simulation, so I'm going to jump to this results here. Go ahead and delete all of these uh, results and go from the beginning. So this is a, this simulation took 500 iterations. Again, running on my laptop here, it probably took a few minutes, about uh, 60, so, so 6 thousand seconds on my laptop so that's about 600 100 minutes um, you know uh, about uh, an hour and a half let's say an hour and 40 minutes to run the simulation which is not too bad uh, with a with a more com computational resources more cores a little bit faster machine this could run much faster let's see what the type of results we get here so um, first we can look at the deformation so yeah, this, this tells me uh, this is true scale. So we're actually modeling the contact between the two components. You can see how the, the, the implant is moving as a function of the displacement. We can pull this uh, remote displacement down and look at the force reaction of it. Uh, so at a maximum, it's taking 3,000 newtons, which is about uh, 3,783 newtons. So if I divide by that by 10, it's about uh, 378 kilograms. So quite a bit of force uh, on this on this part to deflect it by one millimeter. Maybe I overdid it. We we have to check the actual requirements for the ASTM or ISO standard for that. We can also look at the stress. And maybe we're not interested in all the stress, but just the stress in the implant and the um, and the screw itself. Okay. So we can look look for a maximum stress location, which is on the inside. You can see that it's there's a high stress area here, a high stress area here due to the contact location. And if I was to draw a line and segment the model. I can look inside to see that at this teeth point is where I have a lot of stress. Uh, that, that's the stress on the implant that builds up. So if anything is going to fail, that's likely an area of failure. Um, we can also look at con connections, uh, so contacts. And this tells us, uh, let's remove all the linear contacts. So we're left with nonlinear contacts. It shows me uh, the yellow area is where separation is happening. It's near, but it's not quite touching. 
the orange area is where it's just touching and because these are frictional contacts it's not exerting any pressure red areas is where we have pressure being exerted and things are sticking uh, you can see there is uh, sliding here and that's what caused the uh, sorry sticking area that's what caused our load and we have a place here where we're not touching anything you can also plot things like contact pressure which is important for models like this so maximum pressure is occurring here where it's, and the rest of it it looks pretty low it looks like maybe we have a, a concentration there somewhere okay. and lastly we can look at the fatigue re results um, let's put in a uh, life you have the ability to look at rainflow matrix uh, fatigue sensitivity hysteresis all of these things but if we just plot a basic life plot on the two components here uh, the other thing we should do is uh, it's not going to be fully reversed because we're pushing this device down uh, and then let it, letting go instead of pulling it upwards so we're going to evaluate the zero base stress and it looks like uh, we have lots of fatigue life nothing is going to fail it's 1.8 uh, the number of cycles of failure is extremely high we can exaggerate this so what's my 20 percent safety factor on fatigue okay now we're at 1.7 uh, 1 times 10 to the 7 and if I go to 1.5 scale factor so I'm scaling the stress by 1.5 times now we're down to 996,000 uh, the minimum fatigue is occurring right here as we'd expect in the contact area so this gives you an idea of the type of simulation we can do for a, uh, a dental, dental implant uh, design we can do this, this type of analysis for almost any type of orthopedic implants where you're required to undergo various types of testing regimens. Uh, the, what makes this simulation accurate is that we're allowing the text fixture to separate uh, as it should from our test material. And if I look at the contact up here, you will notice the, the contact area moving around uh, so, so the contact location is sliding as a function of deformation. So this is true large deformation with nonlinear contacts. Based on the simulation, we can do another type of analysis. You can see the model exact, is exactly the same, but we've switched to an ex explicit dynamics model. What this allows me to do is, is look at an impact simulation a drop test on, on this part. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at this video as I drop a piece of steel on the implant. You can see the loading here is dynamic. We can understand the maximum deflection. When I drop this piece of steel from 2 meter up, it, the dental implant deforms by almost 1 millimeter at, as is, at this maximum location here. We can look at the stresses on the screws itself. The implant, the, the, the screw stress, both, and we can look at various other uh, scenarios. So it tells me what the maximum stress is as this dental implant undergoes an impact. So if you're need, finding the need to hammer implants in and seeing how that behaves in, inside the body and where things could potentially break, this is a great tool for modeling those dynamic events. Setup is very similar, explicit dynamics also takes a while to run however the big benefit is that it automatically detects interactions between different bodies so I don't have to specify all possibilities for impact that's all for the simulation hopefully you enjoy this analysis um, it's uh, we're finding this very helpful for many of our orthopedic implant customers so if you have questions please feel free to reach out to us at ozenengineering.ozeninc.com uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe or give a like on YouTube. Thanks very much and have a great day.